here we are again, and we're going to pick up where we left off last time. And we were talking about the notion of one clock delivering some kind of timing information to a second clock. One may ask, how is this done? In I'll give you one example. If this piece of equipment was a DS1, it's putting out a particular kind of a, a waveform, which if you think about it, if you, it has edges, and so you can recover a clock. And any time you can recover a clock, at this, at the receiver, you can lock to it. Within, within some, uh, Parameters, provided certain parameters can be met. So, we think about delivering timing information. This timing information which is delivered, one of the definite issues is uh, how good is it? And then in a previous case, we had notion of a fractional frequency offset. That should be zero. The drift should be zero. So, all that is clock 2 sees in the recovered clock is phi of C, that's the noise. So what does this clock 2 do? It applies effectively a phase lock loop or an equivalent thereof. And what does a phase lock loop do? A phase lock loop looks at the incoming signal, whatever it be the reference. This. It does a, a comparison, so I'm going to show plus and a minus. It takes this error, it puts some kind of a filter, and uses that to control an oscillator. So here's an oscillator which is, for lack of a better term, I call this a VCX, so it's uh, whose frequency is governed by the, the voltage input. And from that oscillator, there may be a divide of some kind to make sure that the, the two periods at which you're comparing the two signals is the same. And that's how you generate the error. Now this is what the structure would look like from a signal processing standpoint. What this looks like is the input coming in. You have a low pass filter, which is essentially the effective of this loop, which will be reducing this random noise. It's removing all the high frequency components of the random noise. But what is often forgotten is that the local oscillator himself may be generating some, some noise itself. So you have the local oscillator noise and that, that sees a high pass filter. So when you look at, if you try examining the output of this whole clock as, it, as such, the total noise you see is a combination of the input noise which has been low pass filtered and the local oscillator noise which has been high pass filtered. And all the, the specifications on the clock in terms of the different uh, clock metrics, m tie and t del, which we'll talk about again, we talked about it before, we'll talk about it again next, this m tie and t del uh, metrics to show whether the re resulting noise is adequate, too much, or is it good or bad, etc. So that's the, the general way of analyzing a, a clock transfer mode and uh, it's how this noise gets filtered. Thank you.